He was a racing driver like no other, fearless, relentless, and utterly unforgettable. His name was Sterling Moss, and he was a legend of the sport, a master of the track, and a true icon of Formula One. He was a driver who lived and breathed racing, whose passion and skill were second to none, and whose feats will be remembered in the history of the all-time greats. And yet, despite all his accomplishments, there was one thing that eluded him, the World Championship. But for Sterling Moss, that was never what defined him. He was a man who raced for the sheer love of it, who pushed himself to the limit every time he stepped into the cockpit, and who proved time again that you don't need a title to be a legend. This is the story of the uncrowned king of motorsports. Sterling Moss was born on September 17, 1929 in London, England to Alfred and Eileen Moss. His father, Alfred, was a dentist and amateur racing driver, and his mother, Eileen, was also an amateur racing driver. Growing up, Sterling showed a keen interest in cars, and his father would often take him to Brooklyn's, the famous racing circuit in Surrey, to watch the races. At the age of 18, Sterling entered his first race, driving a Cooper 500. Despite a lack of experience, he quickly showed promise, and in that same year, he won his first race at Bro Aerodrome. He continued to race in Formula 3, and in 1950, he won the British F3 Championship for the second time in a Cooper Norton. Moss's early success in motorsport was thanks in no small part to his father's support. Alfred Moss was a dedicated racing enthusiast and encouraged Sterling's passion for the sport, even building him a racing car in their garage. However, Alfred's enthusiasm for racing also had its downsides. His father was involved in a serious accident while competing in a hill climb event, which left him with a broken back and ended his own racing career. The incident had a profound effect on Sterling, who became acutely aware of the dangers of motorsport. Despite these concerns, Moss continued to pursue his dream of becoming a racing driver. He made his Formula 1 debut in 1951, driving for HWM in the British Grand Prix. Although he finished in 8th place, he impressed many with his skill and determination, and it was clear that he was a driver to watch out for. His early years in racing were not without their challenges, however. Money was always tight, and he often had to rely on the support of his father and his sponsors to keep racing. He also faced discrimination and prejudice from some quarters who looked down on him for being a middle-class driver in a sport that was dominated by wealthy aristocrats. Despite these obstacles, Moss remained undaunted, and he continued to push himself to the limit on the track, setting his sights firmly on the ultimate prize, victory at the world's premier motorsport series, Formula One. Sterling Moss made his debut in the 1955 F1 season, which was a very successful and memorable campaign considering he was just a rookie. He won his first race that season at the Grand Prix at Aintree, becoming the first British driver to win the British Grand Prix. He also finished second in two other races behind his Mercedes teammate Juan Manuel Fangio, who won the championship. Moss scored 23 points and was a runner-up in the standings. He also won the Mille Maglia, a famous endurance race in Italy, driving a Mercedes-Benz 300 SLR, which proved to all that Moss was not a man there to mess around and that he will push to the limits no matter what. He was once again one of the top drivers in the 1956 season, competing for Maserati. He won two races, the Monaco Grand Prix and the Italian Grand Prix, and he also scored the fastest lap in four races. He ended the season with 27 points, only 3 behind the champion Juan Manuel Fangio, who raced for Ferrari. He was exceptionally skilled, challenging the likes of Fangio who was a way more experienced competitor. Moss had a remarkable season in 1957. He won 3 races out of 8, including the first victory for a British car and driver on foreign soil at the French Grand Prix. He also won the longest and most grueling race in Formula 1 history, the Pescara Grand Prix, where he had to dodge goats and other obstacles on the road. He finished second in the World Championship behind an extremely dominant Juan Manuel Fangio, who was his teammate at Maserati. Then 1958 came along. It was his season to finally prove himself as the Formula 1's best and his best chance to finally become the world champion. It was the first race at Argentina which was previously dominated by Juan Manuel Fangio. Fangio got pole position but then Moss took the lead by the halfway point after Fangio had a misfire. Hawthorne finished in 3rd place, who was looking like a serious contender for the championship. 1958 Monaco Grand Prix was next, which took place and saw only 6 drivers finish. Hawthorne was one to retire, and Moss had also retired due to an engine failure. Then, the next race would take place at the Dutch Grand Prix, where Sterling Moss qualified 2nd and then dominated the race, leading 100% of the race winning by 47 seconds and taking the fastest lap. 
Hawthorne finished 5th, which got him 2 points, but it seemed like everything was going in Moss's favor. After the Indy 500, the next race was at Belgium. Hawthorne qualified on pole, and then went on to take 2nd. Moss had an engine failure, removing him from a huge lead in the championship. The French Grand Prix would be a dominant race for Hawthorne. He qualified on pole position, led every lap of the race, and took the fastest lap, making a 24 second gap in front of Sterling Moss. Not too far away, the British Grand Prix was held. Moss took pole position in front of his home crown, and then suffered an engine failure, unfortunately, with Mike Hawthorne finishing second. In the next races, they would have an intense battle for the title, with Moss finishing P1 and Hawthorne P2. Then, it was the final race. Mike Hawthorne qualified on pole, but then Sterling Moss went on to drive arguably his best race ever. He was already in the lead by lap 1 and would continue to obliterate the competition, being almost 2 minutes ahead of Hawthorne at the end of the race. When the pressure was on him, he delivered, and he had won the championship by 1 point. Sadly, the race was also marred by a fatal accident involving Stuart Lewis Evans, Moss's teammate at Vanwell. Lewis Evans crashed on lap 42 and suffered severe burn. He died six days later in a hospital in England. Moss was deeply affected by his death and considered retiring from racing. He later said that Lewis Evans was the greatest loss that I have ever had in motor racing. As things looked set in stone where Moss was finally going to be the champion, a controversy broke up which would define everything. Moss led the race from start to finish, but Hawthorne was involved in an incident with Phil Hill on lap 6. Hawthorne spun off the track and rejoined behind Hill, but he was accused of having received outside assistance from a push start from his mechanics. The stewards initially disqualified him for receiving outside assistance, but they later reversed their decision after Moss testified in Hawthorne's favor, with Moss even launching protests to further justify Hawthorne's position, despite it meaning a huge loss for him. This meant since Hawthorne finished second, Moss lost the championship by just one point. This is the moment that defined Sterling Moss. He was a driver who was great, that was always racing at the best, but also a driver that always had huge respect for others. He was a man that defined what racing is, fair competition, skill, respect, and victory with honor. This was a huge testimony to Sterling Moss's sportsmanship and how he was an honest racer who wanted to achieve greatness in a fair manner and wasn't afraid to make justice. Sadly, he wouldn't get a chance to win another title as the years following his championship battle were not very successful. Moss continued to race with various teams and cars, often choosing to drive British machines over more competitive ones. He won four more races in 1959, finishing third in the championship behind Jack Brabham and Tony Brooks. He repeated this result in 1960 and 1961, winning three races each year and showing his versatility by driving different types of cars, such as front engine, rear engine, and four wheel drive. Moss was always a threat to win any race he entered, but he also suffered from bad luck, mechanical failures, and accidents. His last victory came at the 1961 German Grand Prix, where he beat the dominant Ferrari team with a Lotus Climax. In 1962, Moss suffered a severe crash at Goodwood that left him in a coma for a month and ended his racing career. He recovered from his injuries but decided not to return to Formula 1, fearing that he had lost his edge. He retired as one of the most respected and admired drivers in the history of the sport, with 16 wins and 24 podiums from 66 starts. Sterling Moss was a true legend of Formula 1, with a remarkable career that spanned over a decade. Despite never winning a world championship, Moss's skill and talent on the track made him one of the greatest drivers of his era. He competed in over 60 Grand Prix races, winning a total of 16 of them and achieving 24 pole positions. He also had numerous victories in other racing series. He was known for his sportsmanship, his competitive spirit, and his ability to connect with fans around the world. His performances on the track inspired a generation of drivers and helped to cement Formula 1's reputation as one of the most exciting and prestigious sports in the world. Despite retiring from racing in 1962, Moss remained a beloved figure in the motorsports community throughout his life. His contributions to the sport were recognized in 2000 when he was inducted into the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. He was also knighted with the most excellent order of the British Empire. Moss passed away in 2020 at the age of 90, leaving behind a legacy that will continue to inspire and captivate racing fans for generations to come. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking the like button. Here are other interesting F1 stories you can watch. Catch you in the next one. Peace.